This video covers content that was cut before the Elden Ring network test. Be ready to see item descriptions, location names, and enemy placement that differ from the retail version of the game. We'll go through a series of cut quest lines that are all tied together thanks to cut NPCs' interactions, giving an idea of an alternate timeline of content for Elden Ring. Let's begin. Our first stop is Gilbert, a cut NPC that used to be at the same location held by Yura in retail. He also shares the same voice actor. Let's hear him. Good lord. Good god of vengeance. Two grudges. Soak the lance. Thanks to the network test parameter files, we can see that Gilbert used the eccentric set, which in retail belongs to Jaren. In these files, he's defined as using the claymore, but his loot defines him as dropping the flamberge sword. Also, conceptual artwork shows Gilbert wielding the flamberge, which is why the NPC was restored with that weapon. The version 1.0 of the game has an alternate description for the flamberge in the Chinese text files, also making a reference to redeemers. The Brazilian translation of the network test contains a skill that talks about redentores, Redeemers. This connects the conceptual art, the idea of Redeemers, and Gilbert as preceding that of Jaren. Also, this is one of many instances where old lore item descriptions are confirmed by cut content. Let's keep going. By the way, have you heard of the Crucible Knights? There's one by the name of Ordovis. And I must find him. He's an old hero of the Shattering. But... There's a grudge out against him. The lands between are brimming with those who cannot die. It makes for a cesspool of vengeance. Gives me a shiver just thinking about it. Let's go find the Crucible Knight Ordovis. In the network test's maps, he was located by the Evergale south of Agil Lake, which was called the Erd Tree Gazing Evergale. In retail, we have the Forlorn Hound Evergale, where we fight Derrywill together with Blade. While Gilbert calls this knight Ordovis, in the network test, the name given to the boss of this Evergale was Crucible Knight Flow. This shows there was already a transition happening between using a Crucible Knight to the current Bloodhound Knight Derrywill, since in retail, Flow is the name of the Spirit Ash for a Bloodhound Knight. Finally, the boss flag that progresses Gilbert's quest in the unused event code is 10440500, which maps to defeating the Evergale boss. If you had spoken to Gilbert, he would be a summon for the fight, identified in the map files as the Mercenary Swordsman.
If we now go back to Gilbert, he would have two alternate dialogues, depending if we defeated Ordovis with him as a cooperator. Ah, uh, you. Did you defeat Ordovis of the Crucible? I could sense it. The God of Vengeance surely smiled upon that battle. Huh. Maybe you're meant to be a Redeemer too. Oh. There you are. Hi. It must have been a dream. Strange. I was fighting at your side. Against Ordovis of the Crucible. <sighs> there was a revenge so sweet. Fit to serve the very god of vengeance. <laughs> oh. Maybe you're meant to be a redeemer as well. Before we move on with the quest, let's hear some dialogue that shines some light on the role of a redeemer. These fellows, who knows? Just some lads who did someone wrong. They got what was coming. Nothing more. Pure intent on revenge. Pray to the God of Vengeance. Hmm? You'll have yourself a corpse in no time. In the lands between, everyone lives longer than they should. They may go mad. But even so, they plead to the God of Vengeance. That's why I'm here. To exact revenge for those who can't do it themselves. Like someone did for me. When I... When I was but a tyke. The question remains as to who or what was the God of Vengeance. Also, why is there a grudge against Ordovis? While it would be hard to answer those questions with the limited information we have, there's another more obscure detail that can be answered thanks to Gilbert's unused dialogue. There's a tutorial for using the smithing stone at Church of L.A. that mentions a blacksmith somewhere in the lands between. Gilbert had something to say about him. You're tarnished. Then you're here to fight. Aren't you? For the Elden Ring. Well, there's something you ought to know. There's an aberration of a blacksmith. Past the checkpoint that leads to Stonevale. He doesn't seem to think much of anyone or anything but oddly. He's willing to smith weapons for Tarnished. He has a fine arm. Have him take a crack at your goods. The question for me, of course, is whether he's in need of any vengeance. The checkpoint Gilbert mentions is Stormhill Shack, which in the network test was called Scavenger Shack. After the cut NPC reeling Rico, there we can find Smithing Master Hugh, which was already disabled back in the network test maps. References to the NPC also survive in event code and map regions for the network test, confirming Gilbert's dialogue was implemented at some point. Concept art for the blacksmith also places him in the shack, showing us how in early days this was a design idea they played with. Another detail is that Gilbert says an aberration of a blacksmith. Aberration being the old lore term used for misbegotten in English translations, Hugh is a misbegotten, Considering this translation was recorded by a voice actor, it seems at some point it was the preferred term for misbegotten. During development, Scavenger Shack acted like a hub for NPCs, perhaps predating Roundtable Hold. Here you could meet Roderica, Hayeta, Reeling Rico, and even Kale. Regarding Kale, there's two main versions of the NPC. The Great Caravan Kale, cut from Elden Ring's retail version, where Kale tries to find his clan under the capital. Well, even we had a place to call home once. The Great Caravan, they called it. But it's been lost to us for ages. I've been searching for it as long as I can remember. And with a name like that, you'd hope they'd kept some fine goods there, eh? This questline has one of the most iconic pieces of voice acting in all of Elden Ring. You, is it? Hmm? Did you see? What they did to my ancestors. The whole clan buried alive. Sick. Maddened. Husks of themselves. If you heard their moans, they're hardly human anymore. They 
think we worship the Three Fingers? That we called the maddening sickness down upon them? Well, if that's what they expect from us, then that's what they shall get from us! The world of Grace and his people should have been content to see us sink between the cracks, but to have intruded upon our solace, having broken us upon their whims, I'll never forgive any of you. Then, there's the other, much older version of Kale, cut long before the network test. It tells a story of three nomad brothers that reached Limgrave, escaping from the prison under Laindal. That quest has the particularity that if you kill any of the three brothers, then the other two will notice. It reaches a point where Kale decides to close shop, since they know there's a Tarnished killing them. The Tarnished, eh? Huh. I'm afraid I'm not open for business. My brothers have been attacked. I must tell this thief who dares feed the cursed flame before our anger blends and we forget who we are. We collect on our debts, always. But until that point, it seems that there's no punishment for killing Kale and all his brothers. Our brothers have been attacked. This will not go unpunished. You can be sure of that. Well, well. You've made yourself a target of vengeance. Perhaps this, too, was meant to be. In Gilbert's event code, we can see that his invader state gets enabled if Kale or any of his brothers is killed. He would invade you at several locations across Limgrave, all linked to Kale or his brothers. Maps, regions, and quest files still survive that pinpoint to the exact locations where these invasions happened. In fact, Kale used to sell a note about Redeemers. These invasions made Gilbert a big obstacle as you tried to progress through Limgrave. Gilbert reaches a point where he's even waiting for you at the small corridor that leads up to Stormvile. This whole aspect of Gilbert's quest being linked to Kale and his brothers shows us that a whole different progression was planned for the start of the game. If you managed to kill Gilbert, he would have his own special text. But let's go back to Gilbert and continue his quest. We had already helped him kill Ordovis. Let's see what's next. All right then. I'm off to Stonevale Castle. Lord Godric has kept busy with his grafting, slicing off arms, like harvesting ears of wheat. He's run up a mighty debt in blood. A demigod, yes, he may be. But no one escapes a redeemer. Regarding Godric's own grafting, there's unused dialogue that tells us that Godric used to send hunting parties to fetch Tarnished for grafting. Hear me, my knights! Proud warriors and true, hunt me down a new branch. Bring me a Tarnished! <laughs> Gostok has unused dialogue related to this practice. A fine branch. Oh, a fine branch. It came to me. <laughs> no! This I cannot forgive! I am son of Godric, chosen by blood to graft! Begin the graft. While in retail, Rogier also warns us about the grafting that's been taking place against the Tarnished. This place is bristling with Tarnished hunters, you know. They sacrifice our kind for grafting. Not exactly a place I'd stroll into without a purpose in mind. These lines seem to latch on to the grafting theme, while they link Gostok, Gilbert, and Godric unused dialogue together. Gilbert also holds a link to the rivalry held between Radon and Millennia. I was thinking, Godric must have an idea about the vengeance sought by General Radon, to whom I swore my oath. Yes. Yes. Godric's corpse will know what to do. He also had an alternate unused line about the grudge held against Millennia. I was thinking, Godric must have an idea 
that of all the grudges born of the shattering, Melania the Rotted is the object of the most profound. Yes. Yes. Godric's corpse will know what to do. So it seems Gilbert wants to take matters in his own hands. Let's head to Stormvale. Gilbert can be found at the side of the throne past Godric, but there's no info as to what he would be doing there. He doesn't have any unused dialogue for Stormvale, and there's scarcely any map data for him at the castle. Also, how did Gilbert get past Godric? Gostok's unused dialogue might give us a hint. S -s Spot on timing. I, I was looking for you. Uh, there, there's something I forgot to tell you. A, a rather repulsive looking light went into the castle just before you. His armor was melting inwards, practically falling apart. Can't be in very good shape on the inside either, whoever he is. Outward ugliness is a warning of a vile spirit. I just want you to be safe, you know. Be wary of that knight in melted armor. Outward ugliness is a warning of a vile spirit. This knight mentioned by Gostok is no other than Vike, whose summon sign was right outside Godric's boss fight. Next to it, there was Gilbert's white summon sign as well. Could these two NPCs be related? Vike's summon has ID 10000180. We can find this ID and unused event code from the network test. Right next to it, there's the summoning code for Gilbert. It seems both Gilbert and Vike were cooperators for fighting Godric. The flags that enable these summons are both linked to Vike's quest file, which was also left unused in the network test. No text survives for Vike's quest line, nor his original position. Only his quest file survives, where we can see how event flags interacted with Vike's dialogue and quest loot. Also, this quest file tells us that Vike's quest was based in Stormvale. If we play his quest, we can see that as the player got close, Vike would call the player's attention, in the same way Gostok does. What's interesting is that if Gilbert's white summon sign is available, then Vike would ask the player to pass on the key item 8100. This item comes from loot 10-0-1-0-0, which was linked to Gilbert. Passing on the item to Vike would give the player the quest reward, neutralizing boluses and would activate flag 10 enabling Vike's summon sign for Godric's boss fight. Let's go and fight Godric then with our two new cooperators. Based on the game files, it's not possible to know what would have happened on these quests once we defeated Godric. Regardless, thanks to Gilbert's cut content, we could learn a lot of details about an alternate set of quests for Elden Ring. By searching across different translations and game versions, we could see that there was a previous version of Elden Ring, which had alternate lore, with NPCs like Millennia, Radon, Gostok, Kale, Hugh, Ordovis, all taking part in a quest of epic proportions. From fighting the Crucible Knight, to protecting Kale, or finding the blacksmith by Scavenger's shack. Gilbert's questline showed us a limgrave different from the one we know today. 
If we misbehaved, the Redeemer of Vengeance took care that we learnt our lesson. If we worked together with Gilbert, our paths would join Vike, no other than the character on the Elden Ring's game cover, to go against Godric the demigod himself, to punish him for all his grafting. An epic finale that took us not only across the Tenebrae domain, but also through Elden Ring's own development history. I hope you enjoyed the journey as much as I did when restoring the content.